Do you have a plan to resurrect this effort? And if so, could we see what this legislation aims to do narrowed so you wouldn't face the same roadblock? Well, I think her characterization of the bill is incorrect. It is actually a very simple bill. Yes, I will be uh, asking for a roll call vote on the floor. Um, uh, it's something I've been working on since 2014, actually, when I was going through uh, my first rounds of IVF myself, and my doctor said, hey, you know, if these personhood laws pass, your, uh, what, this, what the procedure that we're performing here could become illegal um, because we discarded um, some of the fertilized eggs that we created that were non-viable. Had he implanted those, I would have had a miscarriage. And so we discarded those non-viable fertilized eggs. And he said, if these personhood bills pass, um, I couldn't, I, this would be manslaughter. And so I started working on it, and so I will be reintroducing it. My bill is very simple. It just says you have a statutory right to seek assistive reproductive technology, including IVF, if you want it. Uh, you have the right to offer it uh, if you are meeting all the standard medical practices. If you're a doctor and you want to provide IVF treatment, you can. And if you're an insurance company and you want to cover assistive reproductive technologies, including IVF, then you can cover it. And that, um, you know, that's all it says. It doesn't say you have to seek it, doesn't say you have to provide it, doesn't say you have to cover it. it. Just says that we Americans have the statutory right to seek assistive reproductive technology. It's a very simple bill. It's sad that my colleague um, would oppose it, but I am going to ask for a floor vote later on this year. Well, Senator, I know you've called out Republicans for hypocrisy on this issue, and we have seen a really interesting evolution uh, over the past month or two here. Donald Trump embracing IVF a couple of days, in fact, before your bill was blocked. Senator Katie Britt got to this in, in the formal Republican response to Joe Biden's State of the Union address. Let's hear what she said and have you respond. Here's Senator Britt. We want families to grow. It's why we strongly support continued nationwide access to in vitro fertilization. We want to help loving moms and dads bring precious life into this world. Senator, when you hear words like this and Speaker Mike Johnson saying his party will, quote, protect and preserve, unquote, access to IVF, is the GOP moving in your direction? Not at all. Not a single Republican, including Senator Britt, has come forward to co-sponsor my legislation. Uh, and again, it's very simple. It just says you have the right to access uh, assistive reproductive technology, you have the right to offer it, and you have the right to cover it. It's very simple and not a single one Republican. Single Republican who says that they support IVF has come forward to co-sponsor the bill. In fact, all they've done is put out uh, uh, resolutions and statements saying they support it that have absolutely no protections under the law. And in the House of Representatives in particular, there are over 100 Republicans who have actually signed on to co-sponsor legislation that says a fertilized egg is a person and it is a child outside of the uterus that has equal rights, in, in some cases more rights, than the woman who would carry that fertilized egg. So they can't have it both ways. You can't say a fertilized egg is a human being with more rights than the woman, or, or e at least equal rights, and then also say that you support IVF because the nature of IVF is that there are going to be non-viable fertilized eggs that must be discarded. Uh, in Louisiana, there's already a law in the books that says you can't discard any fertilized eggs. Well, Senator, we know that you are very passionate about this issue and we'll look forward to the news of, of you reintroducing your bill later on this year, as you say. In the meantime, though, there is some more immediate business that uh, the Senate needs to take care of. What is your current understanding of the plan in regard to government funding? Are you expecting to spend the weekend? Will we see a partial shutdown before you can actually vote on this minibus? So we are committed to getting this done and not having a government shutdown. It just depends on... Uh, whether or not my Republican colleagues want to play games and try to do, introduce amendments. Uh, there is a deal that has been agreed to uh, by the lead negotiators uh, on the Senate side. I'm really pleased that uh, a bipartisan uh, uh, partnership between Senators Patty Murray and Susan Collins have moved forward and they have made a deal with the House. Um, and so they're working on that deal right now. And if that comes to the floor for a vote um, and we can pass it in whole without adding any amendments to it, it will, it will pass and we won't have government shutdown. Mm -hmm. But if the House attaches any amendments or we attach any amendments, the whole thing could fall apart and we would go well into the weekend. The goal is to get this done without shutdown, which means we would need to pass it by midnight on Friday. Yeah. Lastly, Senator, from your view on the Armed Services Committee and, of course, your experience uh, with the United States military, do you favor 
giving a loan to Ukraine, if that's the only form in which military funding from the U.S. can pass this Congress? Well, it wouldn't address the issue at hand, because the problem is of the $65 billion in the supplemental package for Ukraine, 55 billion of that actually stays in the United States and it actually goes to American mm -hmm. defense manufacturers to replenish America's stockpile. So when we gave them our old Abrams tanks, when we gave them our old F-16s, we need to refurbish and, 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 and put back into our stockpiles, you know, uh, those weapons, those uh, munitions. And so we can't give Ukraine a loan to pay to American defense manufacturers to re to for U.S. stockpiles. Are we going to give ourselves a loan? So the loan thing doesn't work. Um, and, and frankly, what we need to do is pass the supplemental that passed out of the Senate with a very strong bipartisan vote. And the House just needs to come forward and, and pass this legislation now.